longer. Thank you very much. Uh, a warm welcome to those attending or viewing, watching live on our council YouTube channel, Hillingdon, London. My name is Council Higgins. I'm the chairman of this committee. Uh, details of business to be considered today are shown on the agenda, copies of which are accessible in the room and online under the live broadcast without me pointing like that. Uh, for those present in the room and intending to speak, please note that you will be filmed and any statement you make will be recorded and made public. Uh, a reminder to anyone speaking today that your voice will only be audible online if the microphone is switched on. I will go through when the petitioners want to speak, but when you come up, they tell you what the rules are then. Um, we're not expecting a fire alarm tonight, so if there is a fire, please follow officers out of the room. Uh, mobile tablet devices, uh, if you can make sure they're switched off, please, or on silent. Uh, you might see that the, the committee does use their computers to look at agendas and stuff, and I can promise you they're not playing Tetris or anything else on them. So, uh, we go now through to the attendees before we move to the agenda. I'd like to introduce my councillors first, Councillor Tuckwell, Councillor Tubidar, Councillor Gohill, Councillor Mand, Councillor not San Sapuri, forgive us for the kink, Councillor Gill, welcome, uh, Councillor Singh. Uh, our officers, Ros Johnston, my planning service manager, Kate Crosby, planning team leader, Matt, I was going to call him Matt, I promised I wouldn't, Max Smith, planning team leader, Hayden Richards, principal planning officer, uh, Anisha Burnham, a planning officer too. Uh, then I have my, up to, up to my left, I have Glenn Egan, our legal advisor, and Shira Asherad, is that correct? Yeah, oh, sorry, a big forgive me. Um, is there supporting Glenn tonight and seeing probably will be taking over shortly anyway. Uh, and Steve Clark, who is brilliant and is the guy right next to me who makes sure that I do the right thing. So, we've done that. So, now apologies for absence. So, we've received apologies for absence this evening from Councillor Sansapuri with Councillor Gill substituting. Uh, Declaration of interest and matters come before me, Councillor Gohill. Um, yep, I have a non-pecuniary interest in item number nine. It's an uh, old friend's house. A number, one of the item, one of the impacted items is number 55 is an old friend's house. Okay, I thank will you. step out for that. Thank the... you. We'll make sure we get you back after. Uh, matters that have been notified in advance or urgent, there are none. Uh, to confirm that all items in, uh, in business are marked part one and will be considered in public. There is no items in part two to be considered in private. Um, I think I've covered everything there. So what we're going to do is we're going to do our first item, which is uh, item six, which is 65 Berwick Avenue Hayes. Who is taking me away on that one? Max, welcome. Off you go. Okay, um, the proposal is for the conversion of a six-person house multiple uh, occupation to a ten-person house in multiple occup occupation. Uh, this needs planning permission because it's moving from use class C4 to a sewer generous use. Um, there are, um, there's a petition with 20 objections to it, and that's why it's before the committee. Um, officers are recommending refusal on five grounds. Um, first of all, it's a principle. Uh, impact on neighbours from noise, um, amenities and such like, um, impact on the street from traffic and congestion, uh, the inadequate quality of the accommodation and the lack of a flood risk assessment. Uh, just looking through some of the plans of the site, as you can see this is a, this is a, this is a lay layout that they propose. There's no external alterations proposed, so it just focuses on the changes to the interior. Um, in terms of the inadequate accommodation, see that the kitchen is only 20 square metres and that's meant to attend for uh, 10 occupants and you see um, room 2 on this plan and that's that's region next to the kitchen we're concerned that there'd be a lot of noise from you know, transfer people passing by that room for the other parts of the building and also there's no um, there's no storage space you know adequate for that number of people um, people would be, would be in um, five double rooms and there'd be one smaller room as well so um, you know, there's concern about just the number of people which should be occupying this house which is it's just uh, an ordinary end of terrace um, um, property. Um, consider that the number of people occupying the house would cause harm to many of neighbours from the noise from people coming and going. Um, just moving through to the concerns on highways grounds. And perhaps this, this is perhaps the best illustration of it. Um, there's no off-street parking for the for the for the proposal. Um, there's just a hard standing at the front there. That's that's inadequate for 
you know any parking at all because of how you know it's like that so some some uh, homes on the street do have off, do park cars on that space but it does result as you can see on the left on the right of the picture with a you know, sometimes with the rear of um parked cars sticking out onto the pavement and that's considered inadequate um so there is a potential for significant displacing of parking onto the street with the additional people. It's, a, it's an area with a public transport accessibility level of 1B, which is about as low as it can get. So we would expect anyone living in this property to have, you know, very heavily dependent on private car use. And um, just moving on to our final reasons for refusal, there's lack of a flood risk assessment. It is in the flood, flood zone two, where we'd expect to have an assessment, even though there's no changes to the um, to the physicality of the building, the fact that there'll be more pe people li living in the building would be increasing the risk, and so um, in those circumstances, our policy does require a, uh, a flood risk assessment. Uh, so, so overall, we would um, we're recommending refusal for this, and um, for a lot of sympathy with the um, concerns set out in the uh, petition. Thank you very much. Thanks. That's really good. Uh, okay, so we have, I believe, um, Steve, we have a written a written rep from the petition organisers, yes? Yes. Okay, so this is a written representation from the lead petitioner uh, of the petition objecting to this application. Since learning of this application, households in our neighbourhood have felt troubled and very anxious about the possibility of this property be being granted permission for 10 persons. A large majority of households in our street are generally families with children and the elderly. For several years, the above property has been a ten tenanted HMO property occupying multiple tenants, as such, there has been a large turnaround of tenants with a history of antisocial behaviour, including drug use and drug dealing, noise disturbances and arrests where police have been called at multiple times. Previous reports have also been issued to our local councillors with residents of our neighbourhood raising concerns and red flags regarding this HMO property. We intend the, to explain our strong objection to the planning application being granted from a six-person HMO to a ten-person HMO listed below. Number one. Poor property management and tenant selection has led to this to a history of drug use and drug dealing at the property. This has led to an increase in drug addicts surrounding our homes. Police have been involved several times. This attraction of drug users to our neighbourhood has significantly impacted the safety of the residents and children on our street. We are, we are strongly concerned that the increase in persons from 6 to 10 will result in more crime and impact the safety of children and vulnerable adults in the area. Number two, noise pollution. Antisocial behaviour and disturbances have resulted in police presence at late times of the night. This is a real safety concern for vulnerable elderly neighbours and children. Please find attached some images. These were circulated to the committee uh, yesterday. Please find attached some images of the most recent uh, disturbances during the night. Video evidence is also available should you request it. An increase from six to ten persons will result in further antisocial behaviour in the area. Number three, litter and refuge waste from the concerning property being scattered onto the road. This issue has been discussed with our local councillors several times in the past. This has led to an increase in rodents and pests in our area. This has been a direct result of the concerning six-person HMO property due to a natural increase in refuge and waste and non-compliance with protocols. We are strongly concerned that the increase in persons from six to ten will, will cause this problem to further escalate increase pollution and cause a health and safety risk in our area. Number four, lack of physical space for car parking has resulted in a heavily congested road. An increase in persons from six to ten will cause this issue to further escalate and result in driveway blocking and illegal parking. The road cannot accommodate further persons within the property. Furthermore, more cars on the road will lead to a lack of turning space which will significantly impact the safety of vehicles and pedestrians, especially children, in the area. I hope, having heard the concerns from residents in the local area, you will consider this uh, to be valid grounds for the rejection of this planning application. Our area currently is struggling with the issues listed above for several years from the concerning property. A further increase to the occupancy will cause these issues to further escalate and is likely to have a significant impact to the quality of life and health and safety of residents in our area. A signed petition has also been attached from concerned neighbours and residents on our street. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Okay, so is uh, Courtney Dawson present? No. So well, that's saved us some time, hasn't it? Um, any other letters or anything? No. Don't. Okay, fine. So we go. We'll go straight to committee. So who's going to Councillor Tubidar? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
obviously an increase from ten, six to ten person is going to cause quite a lot of harm to the uh, neighbors amenity noise and uh, disturbance is going to increase lack of parking is going to have a huge impact on traffic and uh, inaccurate standards of accommodation for future occupants is a really key point which have, has been pointed out with five refusal reasons attached to this uh, application which has been clearly explained in the uh, proposals I support the officer's recommendation for refusal okay thank you C councillor Singh uh, thank you chair uh, like um, Mr. Subhidar, he already mentioned about the car parking, the road is really narrow, also antisocial behavior and ply tipping. So these issues are there. Or so I'm second, I propose. No, you can actually propose because he didn't propose. No, I'm it. second, yeah. No, no, you can propose. <laughs> yeah, I, I Councillor Singh, you are proposing. Yeah, I propose the officer's uh, recommendation. That's fine. Councillor Gohill and then Councillor Gill. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I was just wondering if uh, officers had, if there were potential grounds for an additional refusal reason um, on the grounds of uh, unsustainable waste collection or increased um, or increased wastage, um, and if I could come back after to yes. get response, please. Thank sure. you. Max. Uh, yes, I suppose in terms of um, waste collection, we thought that was something that could be um, secured by planning commission permission planning condition if we were to be recommending approval as there, as there is sufficient space in the front for some sort of bin storage but um, yeah I, th I think you know, there is potential there for that as a, as a standalone reasons refusal yes okay Are just we, to go over. does that mean we're adding it for us I was unclear yeah we can add it yeah, uh, yeah I'll, Sorry, I'd like to add right. it and, uh, and I'd also like to second that's fine um, second the officer's recommendation is that okay we can add that was yeah, I think it'd probably be helpful if we just clarified, you know, the particular concerns around that. So um, I'm kind of presuming here, but um, because there would be a large number of bins, um, if we were going to grant planning permission, we could condition um, a bin store. So on the one hand, there could be a benefit, um, but you might feel that with 10 residents, you know, that would be so large that it would be unsightly. So I think it would just be helpful if we clarified um, the concern, whether that's like a visual issue. Um, which I think would be the sort of stronger ground. Okay, so would you like that to come back to me? You, you're going to find that out and come back to me, or we gonna, can we do it here? Um, I think we don't need to come back, yeah. Yeah, well, fine. Good. Okay, great. So we've got that on it. Okay, well done. Councillor Gill. I'd like to second it. Oh, it's already been second now. It's too late. <laughs> Councillor Mand. I just wanted to add a few things. Um, I know the area quite well on the road. Um, it's right next to a, a bridge canal as well, which is uh, the reason where it says lack of flood risk assessment. So um, I definitely um, support the officer's recommendation for refusal. I think Bruce. there's five strong grounds, and like Councillor Gohill said, if we can add a waste one, that would be even more stronger. Thank yeah. you. Brilliant. Councillor Tuggle, do you feel left out? Would you like to say something? Uh, I'm in awe of my... Uh, Colleagues have, have commented. No, but it's it's a, it's a good report. It's it's very strong, and yeah, I've, I've, I'm, I'm in full agreement. Right. So we've been proposed seconded. Uh, we have an additional uh, condition about uh, bin storage and stuff like that. Uh, all those in favour with officer's recommendation, please show that's unanimous. Steve, unanimous. Item seven: Black Horse Pub, or well, Public House, we should say. Katie, is that you? Mm -hmm. Okay. After you, then. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chairman. Okay, item seven seeks retrospective planning permission to retain works that have been carried out in the beer garden of the Black Horse Public House in East Coast. The works themselves are a retractable canopy which provides a covered area for outdoor seating five gazebos that have been grouped together to form a larger area for Kuroga dining, and two outdoor televisions which are housed in um, timber frame structures. So officers have recommended that the application is refused. There are two reasons for this. The first reason is the harm that these structures cumulatively have 
on the setting of the Grade 2 listed public house and that they fail to preserve or enhance the character and appearance of the East Cope Village Conservation Area. And the second reason is harm to neighbouring residential amenity. And this is as a result of increased noise and disturbance arising from the intensification of outdoor use. So if we look at the location plan here, you can see um, whereabouts the residential properties are in relation to the pub. So they're here to the south and south west on um, Flag Walk. In terms of constraints, you can see here that the pub is a Grade 2 listed building and it's also within the East Cope Village conservation area. If we look at the bird's eye view here, we can see that to the front of the, of the public house is a large car parking area and the garden itself is located to the rear and side here. So this is where the structures are located. This is the pre-existing site layout. So you can see um, here you've got the outdoor seating and the garden. So I guess um, one thing to note here is that they aren't protected from the elements. So their outdoor use throughout the year is naturally restricted, um, particularly seasonally. And this is the proposed site layout. So you can see that the seating area here is covered by five gazebos that are grouped together to form one large area. The retractable canopy is located here and the two televisions are here and here in the garden. Okay, so this is um, drawings of the structures themselves. So you've got the retractable canopy and the centre here you've got the timber frame structures that the TVs are located and then to the left you have the gazebos. So one thing to note on these is that they're shown open-sided but the application is to retain the existing structures. So following um, site visits by the conservation officer and the case officer um, it's obvious that the gazebos themselves, uh, the sides and roofs are enclosed with tarpaulins. So they appear somewhat cluttered and ad hoc in character, blocking the rear aspect of the listed building. So if we just move to some site photos. So here you can see the side and rear elevations of the pub. Um, the photo itself is taken standing underneath the retracted canopy. And in the background here you can see the gazebos. I'm just going to go through a few more, some of, of the same structures of different angles. Okay, on this one here you can see um, the different materials also that are being used on the gazebos. Another angle, another one there. Um, this was taken on a different day, a different site visit, but here you can see that cumulatively the structures in varying materials looked a bit visually cluttered. Okay, we've just got a few photos of inside the canopies, inside the gazebos, I should say. Okay, back outside you can see the two TVs, left and right here. Uh, this one here is the larger of the two, so this one has the ridge of the structure well above the garden boundary wall. another day of site visit of the TV structures. Okay, that's um, the car park to the front and just an image there showing the closest neighbouring property on Flag Walk. So officers recommend that retrospective planning permission be refused for the, summari for the reasons summarised earlier. Um, these reasons for refusal are also detailed in section 2 of the committee report. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Vanessa King. No. The petitioner. No, not here. So uh, the applicant or agent, please take a seat. Are you Mr. Smith? Correct. Uh, no relation. <laughs> you have five minutes. What happens, you have a lovely green light will appear. Uh, four minutes will pass and then the yellow and then it go red and I will stop you. And please don't think I'm rude, but I will stop you. So, whenever you're ready. Uh, thank you very much for your time this evening, Chairman and Members. Uh, my name is Patrick Smith and I'm the architectural consultant for this proposal. Uh, the applicants took over the Black Horse in July 2019 
and at that time the Kuroga food operation was an established part of the business, operating since 2012. This style of Kenyan cooking is very popular within the community and a great way for people to come together and socialise. Kuroga is the uh, Kenyan word to, for stir. The Kuroga food offer attracts people from surrounding areas and is a vital part of this pub. The applicants invested over a quarter of a million pounds in the business prior to the COVID pandemic in March 2020 and the resulting lockdown gave this business a very difficult time. During this time, due to the internal restrictions, the garden was busier than its normal use and this resulted in some complaints from neighbouring properties. Once the restrictions were lifted, the customers have returned to their normal behaviour and prefer to stay inside the pub, with the garden operating at moderate levels when the weather is fine. The hospitality industry is suffering, still suffering, with pubs closing every week. 32, 000, 32 pubs rather closed in England and Wales every month in 2022. Over 2,663 pubs have vanished from our cities, towns and villages over the last five years. Without the ability to, create, to continue the Kuroga cooking facility, this business would be at risk of collapse. The applicants erected the outdoor retractable canopy and TV streams for the enjoyment of the patrons. The garden has long been an established part of this pub and is not itself a new function or form to the business. Customers of the pub have benefited from its use all year round, although more frequently during the summer months when the weather's finer. The planning officer suggests the erection of a retractable canopy would in some form increase activity of the garden, therefore, thereby possibly impacting on the neighbouring properties. This is far from the truth as the canopy and TV screens do not increase capacity or footfall above that which occur, already occurs and has historically occurred. The canopy is for the enjoyment and comfort of the pub customers. The canopy only offers light protection, only offers light protection from showers and retracts in heavy rain and strong winds. Notwithstanding the above, the proposed retractable canopy is a slimline profile that is typical form of equipment used in many pub and restaurant gardens. As confirmed by the, uh, the conservation officer, the sighting of the canopy away from the building and within the established outdoor seating area would not detract from the character of the listed building, nor would it appear at odds with the setting of the site. The harm has been greatly, uh, sorry, the harm has been greatly exacerbated by the planning officer and limited weight has been given to the outdoor seating area. In the event the council resists this uh, retractable canopy, it would not restrict the overall use of the pub garden, but limit the options for customers to enjoy the summer days, which would directly impact on the business. Regarding the ter external TV screens, these again uh, are featured for the customer's enjoyment and for display only, and there are no speakers or noise associated with their use. Largely, these would not increase the decibels within the pub garden and certainly would not impact on the amenities of the neighbouring properties in any form beyond the general level of noise associated with the pub garden. Additionally, the applicant does not seek to extend the hours of operation for the pub garden and this would remain as historically has been. There has been an outdoor screen in the garden since uh, 2012 without any council enforcement notice or, noise of, or notice of disturbances. Music is never played in the garden and there is no proposal to do this. Last orders for food in the garden are taken at 9.15 and the pub staff ensure customers vacate the garden by 10 and smokers are encouraged to use the front terrace after this time. Signs are displayed in the garden to reinforce this message. We would request the committee to consider the fact that the applicants have been responsible neighbours and that no complaints have been made to the council environmental health or licensing team which is a reflective fact of the, the, the way the business is well run and operated and managed. And patrons do not linger or convene outside the hour, house beyond the hours already established. There are many examples of similar pub gardens in the Ricelip area that have improved their garden offering. The Woodman in Joel Street, the Natismi Lounge in uh, Northwood Hills, the Woodman at Breakspear Road, the Black Bull at South Ricelip, the Six Bells in Duck Hills Road. In summary, the proposals are modest and not out of character, character with the operation of a pub. The, their retention would allow a local pub to continue to operate in an area where others have failed. We implore the members to consider the benefits to local businesses and community in approving this application, especially there is no demonstrable harm or, or connection to the listed building. A successful business will ensure this heritage asset is maintained for the benefit and enjoyment of all. Like, just in time, well done. 
Okay. Um, does any of the committee have any questions? Yes, Councillor Tuckhall, Councillor Gover. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Smith, for taking us through for your for your words there. Um, in, in reading the report, much is made of, um, and you, you've honed in on it there as well about noise, um, the impact, the potential impact that this development has on his neighbouring neighbouring, neighbouring um, residents. What what measures? are in place or do you propose to put in place to ensure that there isn't a noise, an adverse noise impact on your neighbours? The, um, well the pub garden is, it's obviously, uh, it's always, always been a pub garden so the, the level of noise is, is, has probably been consistent over the, over the years. The yeah, uh, introduction of the, uh, the canopies uh, have really had no impact on the noise in terms of mitigation of noise. When the canopy is extended, that would obviously diffuse some of the noise. The applicants have uh, removed the speakers from within the, te the TV, so there is no amplified uh, music or noise or sound uh, within the garden. So it would just be basically conversation and, and just people, people chatting. That would be the level of noise that, that would operate. The, um, the gazebos uh, where the Kuroga cooking is, is carried out, uh, obviously it's covered over from the rain at the top and when the weather is inclement the, there are tarpaulins or curtains that pull across to keep the areas cosy uh, and I would suggest that these also reduce uh, any noise that comes from within the area but I don't think that dining or eating is a particularly noisy activity. Okay, to follow up? Yes, please. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, okay, thank you for sharing those, those, those thoughts. Um, it's just that Obviously, the, the structures that you have in place are designed to attract people into the garden, and that's that's um, all well and good. But what I'm trying to just get to is, have you you talk about what you've done with the noise, and it's you think it might not be necessarily impact on neighbours, but have you sought any sort of professional expertise to sort of measure that, and whether there's any any mitigation measures that could be put in place to sort of further safeguard your neighbours? At this stage, uh, an acoustic re report hasn't been uh, carried out or serviced. Um, and uh, that was primarily, I think, because uh, the pub historically has always had, the, had this garden that's been in use going back many years. So we haven't introduced any additional noise generating uh, you know, equipment that, that would cause a problem. Um, if an acoustic survey was carried out, it would be quite difficult because I suppose it would have to be carried out when the pub is, uh, you know, empty as it were, nobody there to uh, to attain the level, and then and then be measured at a time when it was busy over a weekend or an evening, uh, and that would that would that would probably show uh, certain readings, uh, but uh, you know that that hadn't been felt necessary at this stage. Thank you, Chairman. Um, thank you for your um, words on the application. Uh, I just wanted to, I have two questions, that's okay. Um, the first one is regarding the TVs. Um, in the report, there's wording that suggests that the TVs are hooked up to surround sound systems um, within the garden, and but there's also contrary evidence, um, contrary words that say um, it's not connected to any outdoor speakers. Could you clarify that for us and if there is intention I, to add speakers? I, if there there, is there's no intention to add speakers to the, t to the TVs in the garden. There, there was uh, a, a bit of history in terms of that the, the uh, speakers had been disabled within the televisions and there was one point where I think a customer downloaded an app uh, on their phone and managed to turn up the, inter in the integral speaker within the television uh, to, to make it work, but subsequently the applicants have actually had an engineer disengage the speakers uh, mechanically, so that, that can't, can't happen again. That was just one evening where that happened. Thank you. Um, and the second question was uh, regarding the, the first minute of your, um, of your speech mentioned this Kurogu cooking and uh, could you could you clarify if these gazebos aren't in? Are you saying if these gazebos aren't in place that you won't be able to engage in this style of cooking, um, and it's only with the use of these? Because that's it, it was sort of heavily implied there, but I just wanted a bit of clarity. Uh, uh, I mean, essentially, the, uh, the 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 cooking of the Kuroga, it's uh, it's a, it, there's a cast iron skillet pot which uh, sits on the floor that has a, a burner a burner below it. 
and effectively the ingredients are put into the into the skillet and they're stirred by the customers. Um, now, the, obviously, with, with the weather as it is in this, in this country, you need some sort of protection from the elements. So there is a, uh, the gazebos provide cover uh, if, it, if there are rains or, or shower in this area. Um, so essentially, with, without, uh, without the gazebos, then the Kuroga uh, couldn't, couldn't take place because it's the nature that it's external cooking, it's outside cooking. If I could just quickly... You may, that's okay. three questions, Sorry. you may. Sorry, thank you. Um, and just, is, has there been um, any sort of impact report to any noise or smoke pollution to neighbours because of the placement of the gazebos right next to people's residential gardens or windows, um, even those who are on the first floor? Just wondering if there's been any kind of well, impact to, to assessment the, made. To the best of my knowledge, there's, there's nothing on file with Hillingdon Council in terms of any environmental issues with regards to the Kuroga cooking. Thank you. Any other questions? I'm going to ask you a question now. I'm allowed as well. So. <laughs> um, the TVs, have you got proof that they've been there for longer than 12 years? Yeah. The, uh, perhaps the applicant would like to say something. If she, if she, would she be allowed to? Yes, you come to the table and take a seat. If you go on the Black Horse social media, yeah. Facebook, you will be able to go to old pictures, okay. and it's there from 2012. Okay. So you can see the pictures, which will give the details of when it was posted on social media. Thank you. Thank you very much. No I have no nothing further to make. Can you just turn the microphone off and take a seat? Uh, thank you for that. Glenn, can you give me some um, legal advice here? If, it's been, if the TVs have been there for longer than 10 years, I believe that that's we're not allowed to. Is it? Is that? Is that? Is that correct, Chairman? If there was a if plan permission was required, and more than that, that ten-year period had expired, that would go to whether you could take enforcement action. Right. This isn't really, though, an enforcement issue at the moment. Okay. And I note an application for plan permission has been res has been made for the TVs that does mention the TVs. So, um, I think if the TVs have been present for that time. That will have to unwind itself sometime at a later date if there, is, if, if there is a challenge to any decision that's made tonight, Chairman. Thank you very much, Glenn. I hope that helps, Committee. Um, before we get on, I just want to say that, you know, we are very pro-pub and we want to see your small businesses uh, succeed. But unfortunately, we have to go by the guise of the planning. So... I'm going to take, uh, I think Steve, you wanted to speak to Mr. Sorry, Councillor Tuckwell. I've probably got a fine for that, but never mind. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, okay. Um, I'm kind of conflicted with this uh, application. Um, and it, it builds on what you, what you just mentioned because, you know, I, I'm very much in favour of, of the local pub um, in the community. This one's got a unique offering, um, I think. Um, so. And, and I want to see, um, I want to see our local public houses do well and attract as many customers as, as they can, but not at the expense of neighbouring residents. And I think that's the con the confliction for me. Um, looking at the pictures, it does look like a bit of a patchwork quilt, and I think that there is there is something that could be done here to achieve a win-win for the public house and for the neighbouring residents. There's quite a strength of feeling. Um, and then when I ask the questions around noise impact and uh, noise impact assessments, you know, I'm, I'm not really clear that there is enough mitigation in place to protect the, the, the neighbouring residents. So th that's my train of thought. I'll, I'll gladly hear what, what, uh, what my colleagues have got to say, but I am conflicted, but I am leaning towards it's a good intention but it's not the right solution uh, at this stage but there is a solution to be had I think on this one thank you Councillor Gohill thank you um, a question for officers perhaps um, with the just looking at the picture that's on the screen with the, um, the roof and the covers on the side for the people who are sitting there is, is that perhaps my first impression and just looking at it with common sense rather than a planning hat on, it adds an aspect of privacy to 
the people who, in those houses next to it on the back is that something that's been is that something that's been considered in terms of everything in terms of everything um just that in in ter not in not so much in favor of keeping them but if it were to be kept could it be kept as a as a privacy element type thing yeah, if I can come back on that one. Yeah, it's an interesting sort of train of thought, and I think I can see where you're coming from that, you know, the screen in effect does add some privacy. And um, so I think you'd have to sort of bear that in mind. But um, my view is that the harm in terms of the appearance and the noise concerns that we've got um, would vastly outweigh any privacy concerns. I mean, I think, um, you know, picking up on what members have said and also what's in the report, it seems like there could be a solution that some form of structure could potentially be acceptable. Um, different materials, different design, um, perhaps a different placement. Um, I mean, officers would be happy to have a, a chat outside uh, of this forum with the applicant if that would be helpful if members do proceed to refuse it. Okay. Thank you. Any further? No? Okay. Um, we are... Can I ask officers... We, we're saying that the retractable... Um, gazebo thingy that's okay are we and, but we're just saying that those uh, tenty things are not so in effect um, there's potential for one of the televisions to be acceptable and the retractable canopy but we have to assess the application as a whole okay. and cumulatively we have concerns okay so I'm trying to give you some advice there uh, so Councillor Tuckwell you want to yeah just just looking at that image there, are, are, can officers confirm, are, are people cooking inside those gazebos? Yes, they are. I think they are, yeah. That's what I yes, they are. That's the problem, I think. Yeah. Katie, uh, could you also put up the, um, the examples on the application that were showing the, the retractable thing? See that? See that one in the corner there? I think that's done really nicely. So, you know, that's it's got it's got a bit around it and everything else. It's really nice. Yes, Councillor Gohill. Um, just continuing on that train of thought there, is it the obviously one of the refusal reasons is um it doesn't fit in with the character of the area. Is it the the colour, the material, the fact that it's there itself? Um if if we could just you know, the there is part of it that's a visual a visual hindrance. If you could just provide a little bit of clarity yeah, on, so on just that. To clear things up. So we don't have a particular concern with the retractable canopy. Um it's more the fact that we have concerns about the gazebos and they sort of have a cluttered sort of a bit of a dishevelled appearance and then one of the television um stands in particular and then because we have to consider the application as a whole collectively all of those elements um, lead to harm to the setting of the listed building um, and don't preserve the conservation area Right, so Councillor Tuck or Councillor Jupiter Okay, I think, um, I think listening, listening to what I've, I've, I've heard and, and building on the comments I said earlier on I mean again, I am conflicted by this, I want to see pubs do well but for me, um, in its entirety, I know there's some elements that we're, we're quite like on this, but in its entirety, um, this doesn't fit. There is a solution to be had that complements the Grade 2 listed building as well. Um, so on that basis, I, I can't go with this one, so I'm happy to move officers' recommendation. Thank you. So I have a proposer, Councillor Jupiter. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I actually was going to propose the thing now that is being proposed I would like to second uh, the proposal for officers recommendation okay lovely um, please don't be disheartened the committee here is quite in favour of you doing something okay so please take up officers uh, olive branch to have a conversation outside okay so I am proposed and seconded um, can, you op uh, can everybody show uh, their intention for officers' approval for refusal? Okay. So that's unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, do you know something? I think I forgot to do something in the beginning, which is unlike me. Um, can we agree the minutes from before? Agreed. Agreed? <laughs> Agreed. Sorry. Um, anyway, uh, so we're going on to item eight. 
And as the computer moves over, I think this is Misha, is that correct? Yes, Chair, that's okay, correct. Okay, right, whenever you're ready. Okay, so item 8, land adjacent to 5 Albert Road slash North Hyde Road, Hayes. The application proposes the erection of two new flats and a new build subterranean dwelling with associated landscaping and parking. It should be noted that this application is a resubmission following the refusal and subsequent dismissed appeals of planning application references 2019-2676 and 2021-1990. An appeal on the grounds of non-determination has been received for the application that's been presented to members this evening. Had an appeal not been received, it would have been recommended that planning permission be refused. The grounds for refusal will be discussed at the end of this presentation. Here is the site location plan. The site is located on a prominent corner plot close to the junction of North Hyde Road and Albert Road. Here is an aerial image for, of the site. For context, the site comprises an open part of grassland with various road signs and street furniture. Here is the constraints plan. The site is adopted highway land despite it being privately owned. The site has a PTAR rating of 5 which symbolises very good. As can be seen from the image on the slide and as highlighted by inspectors in the previous dismissed appeal decisions, the application site provides an important and intrinsic visual break from the surrounding urban built environment. Since the previous appeals, the applicant has erected fencing around the perimeter of the site. Notwithstanding this, public views into the site are still available from various vantage points. Furthermore, the unbuilt nature of the site continues to make a contribution to the surrounding locality. Therefore, the concerns raised in Section 7.01 and 7.07 .07 of the Committee Report about the loss of this open space is of material consideration. Here is a photo of the site fronting North Hyde Road. I would like to draw members' attention to the road signs and street furniture on the site, which are shown on the submitted plans as being retained as part of the proposed development. Planning officers are concerned that the proposed 1.8 metre high boundary wall would obstruct views of these road signs. This issue forms part of the ground for refusal number nine in the committee report. Here is the existing site plan existing front and rear elevations, existing side elevations. This slide contains the proposed block plan. Um, so the footprint here is the proposed two and a half storey building, uh, which would contain two three bedroom flats. This is the external amenity space for the proposed flats. This uh, highlighted uh, footprint here is of the proposed single storey building uh, which would serve as the access point to the proposed subterranean slash basement flat. Um, a key point to note in the front elevation of the existing houses on North Hyde Road, so these houses here align with the rear plot of number 5 Albert Road and that was an important characteristic that both inspectors picked up on during the previous dismissed appeals. So under the previous refusals, uh, inspectors raised concerns about the footprint of the building projecting beyond the established front building line of the properties on North Hyde Road. And as you can see from this uh, footprint here, uh, this current proposal hasn't addressed that issue because it projects beyond the front building line of these properties. Um, and also the single storey building here also projects beyond the nearest uh, property on North Hyde Road. So here is the proposed basement plan. The habitable rooms would either be served by a light well, which is here, um, or the proposed basement void, which is this space here. Here is the proposed ground floor plan. Flat A is located on the ground floor and is accessed by the front door. Flat B is a duplex flat on uh, first and the loft floor level um, and it would have its own separate access from the side elevation of the building. This is the entrance point to the proposed basement um, and this is the open void of the basement that I showed you on the previous slide. Um, this is the proposed first floor plan the proposed loft floor plan, 
the proposed roof plan. Here's the proposed front elevation. So this would be the view of the new building from Albert Road. Um, that's its rear elevation here. So in terms of consultations, two objections, including one from the lead petitioner, were received, and their concerns prim primarily relate to the impact on neighbours, uh, the physical development of the site and highway safety. Also, a petition against the application with 180 signatories was received by the Council. Refer to Section 6 of the Committee Report for further details on the consultation responses. The application has been recommended for refusal as previously mentioned at the beginning of this presentation. The grounds for refusal are detailed in Section 2 of the Committee Report, but I'm going to summarise them as follows. Um, one, the proposed development by reason of the loss of the open space, which is adopted highway land, physical siting, size, scale and bulk of the buildings on this prominent corner plot, forward projection beyond the established front building line of North Hyde Road and excessive size of the rear dormer would result in a cramped, visually obtrusive form of overdevelopment of the site. The proposal would therefore be detrimental to the character, appearance and visual amenities of the street scene and the wider area in general. Um, two, insufficient evidence has been submitted to demonstrate that the proposed development would achieve a minimum floor to ceiling height of 2.5 metres for at least 75% of the GIA of the proposed dwellings. Three, the proposed development by virtue of the inadequate GIA of flat B, so I'll just take you there, so this is flat B, um, would result in a substandard form of residential accommodation contrary to policy. Um, just to elaborate on this point, uh, the London plan requires a two-storey dwelling containing three bedrooms, five-person occupancy to have a minimum GIA of 93 square metres. Flat B has a GIA of 86 square metres. Um, so that would form part of the ground of full refusal. Um, so four, um, I'm going to move to the block plan, the ba proposed basement plan. The subterranean and internal layer of proposed flat C, which is this flat, which is in a basement flat would afford future occupiers with poor outlook and poor levels of natural light. Um, and then additionally, the future occupiers of flat C, which is the basement flat, would experience an unreasonable loss of privacy due to the elevated windows of flat B. So I'm just going to show you the relationship. So there's concerns that the first floor windows here would look directly into the open void, which serves the basement. Um, and then we saw the relationship. So you've got all the habitable room windows facing onto this open void, which flat A would have direct views and close oblique views into. Um, and then five, again, similar concerns, but now relating to the external amenity space um, due to the position of the first floor windows. Um, there would be a d direct loss of privacy in terms of external amenity space for flat C. So um, flat C's external amenity space is here and also within this void area, um, there's like a courtyard, um, or that's what is referenced as on the proposed basement plan. Six. By virtue of its close proximity, oh, I'll just go show you. So next one, number five, which is this property here, um, it was granted planning permission recently for part two-storey, part single-storey side rear extension. So I'll just show you that this is what was approved, and that would be built on this boundary here, which adjoins the application site, which you can see here. So um, the proposed part two-storey rear element would project beyond the rear elevation of the proposed new building by three metres and due to this relationship it would have an effect in terms of the harm to the internal living conditions for uh, the ground and first floor flat so we just try to help you in terms of relationship so the proposed extensions go in here it would project three metres beyond the windows of this new building um, and there's concerns about loss of outlook, sense of enclosure, overbearing impact. Um, okay, seven, in the absence of a legal agreement uh, to prevent the issuing of parking permits to future occupiers, the proposed development is likely to lead to an increase in pressure for on-street parking and have a consequent adverse effect on highway safety through inconsiderate and potential hazardous parking and a risk to road users. 
Eight, the over-provision of on-site parking spaces in a connected location with a high level of, pu of public transport accessibility would discourage the use of more sustainable modes of transport. Nine, the height of the 1.8 meter high boundary wall, which is this wall here, um, would obstruct the visibility space of the proposed parking space and crossover onto North Hyde Road, which is this new crossover they're introducing here. This would result in conflict between road and Footway users harming highway safety. And 10, the last ground for refusal is in the absence of a basement impact assessment, it is not possible to properly assess the impact of the proposed development in terms of flood risk. I'll just take you back to the basement plan, ground instability, and water environment. Thank you. Thank you, Nisha. Very thorough as usual. Um, right, we have a written representation from, is it Mr. or Mrs. Mathuru? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a written representation here from the lead petitioner objecting to this application. Dear Chairman, Councillors and the planning team, please note that 155 persons living around the proposed site signed the petition to the above proposal for the following reasons. There are spaces shown only for two cars on the proposed, whilst an average household needs two to three cars. There is also no provision for the visitors' car, car spaces uh, for the, the new 15 occupiers. This means that the additional cars will end up parked on Albert Road, causing more congestion and inconvenience. Consequently, cars shall be parked on both sides of Albert Road, making it difficult for wider vehicles like ambulances and refuse collecting vehicles to get through. Bedroom 1 of Flat A is shown too close to the pavement and the corner of Albert Road and North Hyde Road that can be a health and safety hazard. The bin store of Flats A is going to be situated exactly on the front building line of the five Albert, of 5 Albert Road near the entrance door that is going to be very unhygienic and thus causing a bad odour that is a health and environmental issue. The proposed entrance and hallway to the flat C from North Hyde Road is completely protruding from the existing building lines of both Albert Road and North Hyde Road properties. Flat C is completely proposed in the basement. That is, again, a health and safety issue in case of fire. Presently, there is a lovely green area that is better for, for the environment, but the proposed plan will destroy the greenery forever. There is a serious ongoing health issue of rodents being in the area, and the proposed is going to make it worse. Uh, local councillor Scott Farley has been um, forwarded the relevant images of rodents in the past. This site has been boarded in the last couple of weeks, meaning that the glass may not be mowed, the grass may not be mowed. Uh, that is going to be another incentive for rodents to hide in. There are two planning proposals in relation to Five Albert Road uh, that have been granted permission, planning permission, and the work of both is to commence from June 2023. Um, their references are given here, uh, with a single-storey rear outbuilding and a two-storey side extension, and part of a two-storey part single-storey rear extension. The proposed is going to create loss of natural light to the occupiers of 5 Albert Road. Please take all of the above points into consideration before making a decision uh, by proving the London Borough of Hillingdon logo, putting our residents first. Thank you in advance. Always come back to us, doesn't it? Okay. Uh, the applicant, uh, is it Dan Hoa and Seaman? Mr. Seaman? Okay, so which one are you speaking? You can both sit there, but you only have five minutes. You'd have to think. If you want to bring a chair up. Yeah. As I said earlier, the traffic light system, four minutes on green, one minute on amber and red. I will stop you. So whenever you're ready. Yes, you do. Yes, please. So I think we'll start, um, one of the, thing, the p main points to start with is um, this application's gone on for quite a long time, it went in um, sort of almost a year ago. Um, the plan applications that have been referred to um, by, by the planning officer is um, essentially that was um, I believe in fe uh, February this year and granted, so that's something that's happened after our plan application. Um, even went in. So um, what I've done today is put together some updates um, 
on both sets of um, drawings, is that something you'd potentially have a look at, which combats a lot yes, of the issues raised uh, by the planning officer um, in this case? Unfortunately not. We have to have any documentation given to us before the committee starts all this morning, so we won't be able to look at that, I'm afraid. Okay. 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 That's fine. Should we run through? Yep. So, uh, lots of open space is a natural element of development. You need to house people. Um, it's just a simple fact of life. Uh, ideally, you do it on places of not outstanding natural beauty in urban areas with good transportation so people can get around to their workplace and to their loved ones. Um, in addition, uh, as a site, as a scrub land it is, uh, it's opposite a four-story ASDA to give it some context. Um, there isn't much of a breakup. It's a very dense suburban area. The breakup tends to happen towards the leisure centre. Um, I think the second point was insufficient, insufficient evidence regarding the floor to ceiling height. This wasn't something that was asked for, but the sections um, which we can provide um, give ceiling heights of 2.5 two, um, 2 metres and 3 metres in the um, subterranean basement dwelling. Um, the third point, the substandard internal floor space for flat B, um, again, um, it has been done on a three-storey dwelling where actually the majority of the accommodation is over two floors. Um, again, on the proposed scheme that we've updated, we've looked to remove the loft floor completely, um, extending the first floor out into the area that's now been extended on the neighbours um, to, um, to give adequate floor space for flat B for a two-bedroom flat over two storeys. Um, substandard accommodation for inter internal accommodation for flat C. Um, I think this is something that we're trying to do um, in terms of testing, testing out um, a subterranean property. Um, it is sort of opinionated because, you know, I think the outlets could be quite phenomenal based on some, um, some of the tiny, ty Taiwanese designs, um, and that's something I think we were looking to do here as, kind yes. of, as a special case. We're trying to basically utilise uh, as much of the land as possible by, by also remaining it green and keeping it within the context of the local area, but also trying to provide a high quality element of like good lighting, open air spacing within the actual unit itself. So that's, this is the kind of inspiration we're looking for. Um, the next point, harm caused due to adjacent approved development. Um, I think this is a bit unfair since it went in kind of half a year after our application. Um, so I don't think that really should and be considered after. and was decided afterwards. Um, but again, updated doc, you know, drawings could have been provided for that. Um, absence of legal agreement, um, again, something that my client would be happy to um, sign and put forward, but it wasn't brought um, to our attention. Um, over provision of parking. Um, now, it's, we've got a bit of a conflict because, you know, on a lot of schemes, we're kind of asked for parking. On this one, we're not. Again, we could just omit the parking completely for the three dwellings. Yeah. Um, originally, the parking was put in because one of the flats is a disabled flat. And speaking from experience, my friends who are disabled rather have a place to park up, take their time to unload themselves and all this. But if the council doesn't want it, then we can remove it. Um, and then... The absence of basement impact assessment um, is something that can get provided, but again, it wasn't necessarily requested. I do understand it's in the SPD. Um, and then just for that, uh, overall, a couple of guys starting out in our career, we're looking to make family dwellings for people of my generation, well, of our generation, at different price points, at better configurations from a standard of the big four developers and aim to be like an award-winning design. Uh, moving forward, we want to adapt the existing planning application with the new plans and see if we can get that approved. Failing that, we'll submit a new planning application with the designs to be addressed. I don't believe planning inspectors, as much as I love you guys, is uh, it's your job just to rubber stamp things, but to collaborate with developers to craft a better neighbourhood and better environments for people. Well, that's it. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions? Councillor Gohill. Thank you, and thanks for your presentation, guys. Um, either of you can answer this question, but, uh, you know, we're, we're councillors here on planning offices. We're yeah. not here to rubber stamp things, no. but we look at things with common sense, and we look at things according to planning policy as well. Um, and a big factor that I think you guys briefly touched upon, but not enough, is actually the loss of privacy within those flats. There are flats that look into other flats, and if you're there to, you know, through the windows, you can see 
through to the other flats, and that was really clearly pointed out. Um, it's not something that was addressed, but you say you're there to, you know, provide um, provide quality housing for people. What would you want to do to to mitigate that, or or do you have a answer to yeah. to that? So the so um, it was it wasn't mentioned to us again until a, until a week ago. So that's the first time I've kind of been brought against that point. There is overlooking, I believe, from on these drawings from the flat, um, the first floor story, and the loft conversion. But again, omitting the loft conversion to bedroom three of the subterranean basement level. Um, again, what we've actually done is made if you move the wall slightly further into the garden to make the garden walls of the two flats bigger. Um, you know, I can provide evidence that there would be no overlooking into those bedroom areas or into the courtyard itself from that area. Um, I understand typically, like I live in a like in a house. Like you can look into your neighbor's garden. Like it, I see it happen often, but it's also it can be done with screening to protect the other neighbor's garden in terms of like with natural trees and whatnot. Um, that's for the top bit, but for the void itself, the courtyard, the idea is to just it will feel very private. It will feel very enclosed and very nice. It's a south-facing courtyard, so it will get all of the sun from east, west, east, south, and west. So that's the idea to bring in the light without having the obtrusiveness from Northside Road, which is a very busy road. I think I think a lot of the points from the whole that have been addressed in this could have been brought to our attention at an earlier stage in the application. I think, um, you know, um, that if there was a discussion between architects, planners um, and clients, um, you know, I think we'd be in a very different place um, than where we are now. Any other questions? No? Thank you very much. If you'd like to turn your microphone and go and sit down. Thank you. As I always do, um, some statements have been made. I'd like officers to come back first. Um, I don't know, is, uh, is Nisha or is it Ros or something? Yeah, I think, I think Nisha, if you let Ros pick up a few things and then you come back in. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I just thought it might be helpful if I clarified the situation regarding... Um, so it's been suggested that there could potentially be some amendments. So just firstly, it is important to note that an appeal against non-determination has been lodged. So in effect, the decision-making has already passed um, from, from the Council. So that's the first point. I think the second and really important point here, um, there is a concern um, essentially with the principle of developing this site. Um, in terms of how that relates to the existing development around and how it affects the openness of the site. And there have been two appeal decisions, which Nisha has explained, and the inspector um, found that that was harmful. So in a sense, you know, tinkering around the edges um, with some amendments wouldn't address this fundamental concern. So in that circumstance, you know, it, we'd just spend um, you know, additional months um, you know, making a few minor changes that wouldn't alter the outcome. So essentially, uh, we haven't sought those amendments. Thank you. Nisha, do you need to come up back on anything? Sure. Just picking up on what's this point about the uh, principle of development not being acceptable, I just wanted to quote uh, some of the comments the previous inspector made on the most recent appeal decision. Um, so I'm just going to read it. It's paragraph 7 and 9. Um, so the appellant contends that a visual gap would be retained between the proposed development and the existing properties along North Hyde Road at the rear of the proposed building. I acknowledge that there would be not a total loss of existing gap and that this proposed gap has been increased somewhat since the previously refused plan application was considered. However, the relationship between the two rows of established residential properties and their interconnectedness would still be lost. I do not agree with the appellant's assessment of the wider area as there are undoubtedly some large developments that exist very close to the appeal site. The applicant, I believe, or the architect mentioned about the Astus. So the inspector did acknowledge that there are larger buildings within the wider locality of the site. Um, just to finish off this part, um, including the superstore opposite, although I do not have the full history or context of the de of these developments in front of me. However, this does not remove the established relationship of the appeal site with the more suburban residential properties that frame it and is not sufficiently compelling 
a reason, I think there's a grammar mistake, to set a larger form of development here. Um, so that feeds into the concerns about the principle of development. Um, and then I just wanted to pick up on about the um, about potentially addressing the light issue. Um, it's mentioned in the committee report a daylight and sunlight assessment hasn't been completed. So um, that would be something that um, when it goes to appeal, well, it has gone to appeal. When we draft the appeal statement, that's something uh, officers will be emphasising to the inspector in terms of no evidence demonstrating that the proposed basement flat would uh, receive sufficient light. Um, in terms of the parking, um, it's only one of the car parking spaces we had concerns about. So the one to the front, uh, I'll just show you here, that's a disabled car parking space. Um, we would want to retain that because the ground floor flat would be uh, or meet the building regulations in terms of uh, inclusive design or disabled access. Um, the concern that we have would be this car parking space here. Um, the previous um, the, sorry, the inspectors of the previous appeals um, were very supportive of a car-free development, given that this site has a PTAR rating of five, six being the highest. So whilst it's appreciated, I think it was mentioned that there are other sites within the borough where we would be seeking on-site car parking provision in this particular instance, given the high PTAR rating, we would be looking for a car-free development, which is the starting point, as mentioned, um, or as stated within the London plan. Um, I think that's all the key points that I just wanted to mention. Oh, the relationship about privacy. Um, so it was mentioned that there is a degree of overlooking between rear gardens and rear elevation windows um, of properties already. Whilst that might be the case, um, the relationship is very different here to a detached or semi-detached house. So you're now introducing a basement uh, dwelling um, and very close proximity to the rear elevation windows of the proposed flats on, on first slash loft floor level. So that relationship, you, I would argue, is not the same and shouldn't be compared to the relationship you would normally have um, in a residential street where you have um, some, to, some degree of overlooking or, of oblique views of neighbouring gardens. Um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, Councillor Gohill. Thank you. Um, I have a question um, yep, for please. officers. Uh, this property is nearish to a railway station or a railway line, at least. Um, I don't know if this would have been. I mean, I don't know if this would have been something that might have been included in a potential basement impact report. But I was just curious as to the impact of trains passing by quickly and causing some vibrations and how that would impact any ground floor or basement subterranean floor flats. Can an officer come back? Um, yes, yeah, so the impact of noise from trains can be a consideration, but in this case, given the separation distance, officers are satisfied that uh, no undue harm in terms of noise or vibrations would be caused by uh, for future occupiers of those proposed dwellings. Um, in other cases where you have a very, very rail rail line adjoining an application site yes i would definitely agree with the councillor in terms of those considerations in terms of noise and disturbance but that's not the case here thank you thank you councillor go we will come back yeah thank you um i'd just like to share a few comments if i if i can about the application um having heard from the um having heard from the applicants uh it seems like there's a lot of we can do this and but obviously as a committee, we have to. It seems that like we have to, Im like, search the impact of something based on the whole application. And the whole application at the moment has a lot of pitfalls. Um, you know, cramped environments, loss of lighting, loss of privacy, and most importantly, an absence of legal agreement as well. Um, the application as a whole, I don't think I could support. I don't think I could support the application, so I'd like to go ahead and propose officers' recommendations for refusal. Thank you, Councillor Gohill. Councillor Tuckwell. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, yeah, I remember this one a few years ago, actually. Um, same same parcel of land. Um, similar to, to Councillor Gohill there, I, I, get, I get what the applicant is trying to do, and it is a very creative design. Um, uh, and I, and I, get, I get the, the points being made, but there's just too much wrong with it. Um, 
and again, I think the applicant said we're testing out subterranean property, but there's no no impact assessment on the basement. We don't know what's going to be going on with 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 anything, whether that's to do with trains <coughs> flooding, uh, impact on 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 the neighbouring properties. So there's just far too much wrong with it. Um, plus, uh, we also heard what an, appeal, uh, an appeals inspector said previously to that as well. So for me, th I just can't go with this one, so I'm happy to second officer's recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Gill. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I've learned something new today. Uh, all my life, I thought that piece of land came under Pinkwell. It doesn't. No. It's that, it's that no. fine line. Uh, just a couple of points from me. I think the first one is, is to the lack of parking on, on the house. I think already it's a quite a congested area, I live down the road from there, and all the excess cars will probably go one of two places, They'll either go on Albert Road or down North Hyde Road, which is a, which is a busy road, and, and in the evenings you're allowed to park on it, it's a single yellow line, so it causes chaos. Mm. So I'm just worried that excess parking will just add to that chaos, and I think some, some residents are currently starting a petition to stop parking there in the evenings as well, so that could be an issue. Uh, and the second one is, um, it's a set of lights where two lanes, one lane turns into two, and a lot of cars go around the bend to turn onto Albert Road. So I'm worried that that blind spot, there might be a blind spot created there, which might cause some havoc with, with the roads as well. So it's, 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 there's a few issues that are niggling me around on top of the ones that have been stated already. Thank you, Councillor Gill. Um, yeah, look, you're trying to do, trying to be creative, brilliant, love it, but you got to, you've got to give the community agreements, flood risks, stuff like that. We cannot approve things like that. We can't do that. And um, so, you know, uh, no, there's no talking, I'm afraid. So I've been proposed and second. Can I have a show of hands? Okay, it's all agreed that that item has been refused. Thank you. Right, we go on to item nine. Yes. Actually, can you... Can we just hold on a minute, please? Yeah. Councillor Gohill, if you can just wait. If you'd like to go now, please. Thank you. really good for me now because that computer moves along I know who's going to speak. Katie after you. Thank you. Um, item 9 it's this application seeks householder planning permission to extend and alter the detached house at 2 Northbrook Drive in Northwood. These extensions include a first floor side and rear extensions, roof extensions and alterations to convert the roof space to habitable accommodation. A front porch is also proposed. So officers are recommending that this application is approved. Okay, so if we see the location plan here, the subject dwelling is here. Um, and as you can see, it's one of five similar detached properties that face north onto Northbrook Drive. In terms of the site constraints, it's not located within a conservation area. Um, it's not an area of special local character and neither the application site or adjoining neighbours are subject to a tree preservation order. Looking at the bird's eye view plan, um, we can see that the character of the area is principally residential in nature. Okay, this is a um, street image of the application site, so it's the one with the red door there. Uh, part of the proposal is to construct a first floor side extension, so it would be similar to the adjacent um, dwelling you can see there at number four Northbrook Drive. It's also proposed to construct, construct a porch where the existing red door is sited and to partially demolish the projecting garage so that's flush with the principal elevation. So this would also be made good with matching brick and the white rendered parts of the front elevation would also be finished in brick to match. The porch itself would reference the Neo-Georgian style of the existing entranceways and it would be rendered to smooth with white masonry paint um, to match its existing entrance and those of the um, neighbouring dwellings. Um, it should also be noted here that the porch um, or a similar porch can also be constructed under permitted development. OK, 
Okay, it is recognised that the dwelling would no longer exactly match the other four dwellings. However, as noted in the committee report, this would not result in harm to the appearance of the house or the street scene, um, not enough to warrant a reason for refusal. The proposed extensions would appear visually subordinate. The brick materials would match that of the existing and neighbouring dwellings. And overall, while the front, fa front facade would look slightly different to the four neighbouring dwellings, it would still appear visually coherent with the amenity of the street scene and character of the wider area. So if we just go through some site photos, this is the house up close, another angle, the rear elevation, um, it's looking towards uh, number four and back towards the rear of number 55 Murray Road. Okay, existing elevations and sections, floor plans. Okay, this is the existing and proposed site plans. So as you can see on here, there wouldn't be any change to the footprint um, of, well, there'd be a slight change. For the upper floors, there wouldn't be any change, but you can see there where I'm highlighting here, this is the garage projection that would be demolished back to the, to be flush with the principal front elevation. And then the porch is going in here. And as you can see, the depth of the porch would align with the depth of what was the garage and then the depth of the neighbouring um, projecting garages. And like those garages, it would always it would be rendered um, rendered smooth with white paint. Oh. Okay, is um, the proposed elevation. So as you can see, um, the two-storey well, it's like the first floor side extension here. So it looks very similar to the neighbouring property next door. And this is just back to the street scene um, image again. So officers have carefully considered the proposal and concluded that the development would sympathetically integrate with the appearance of the dwelling and street scene and would not result in any harm to neighbouring amenity. Therefore, it's recommended that planning permission be granted subject to the conditions detailed in Section 2 of the committee report. Thank you. Um, yes, um, we have um, a written representative for Mr Egan, the mm -hmm. petitioner. OK, so another written representation from the lead petitioner uh, who was originally objecting to this application. Dear committee, may I thank the planning officers for their consideration of my letter dated 21st of April 2023 and their detailed comments and recommendations made on the remaining four issues that were raised. I should appreciate it if this letter could be read out at the Borough Planning Committee meeting and as lead petitioner I consider the concerns and issues we have raised have been dealt with and both reasonably and fairly and we are in agreement with and support the recommended con conditions as tabled by planning officers. We ask that the Planning Committee include all the recommendations within their consent for this planning application. Because we are now happy with the recommendations and conditions, I believe it is no longer appropriate to attend in person uh, at the 10th of May Borough Planning Committee meeting. Yours sincerely. Well done, team. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear that. I want to hear petitions come out and say, well done, well done. Um, do we have anything from uh, the applicant? No. no. Okay, there's obviously I can't speak on it and the other councillor's not here. Um, so I'll go straight to the floor, Councillor Tuckwell. Yeah, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, yeah, that was nice, nice uh, statement there from, from the petition and I echo your point there about, you know, obviously officers have done well there to, to, to address it because I don't think I've had that before. Um, I don't think only, on only on your committee, Mr Chairman, that's right. Um, so, um, yeah, I can see there that, I mean, I was going to raise a point around, around the trees, um, which I know was a concern, but they're not actually on the, in, in the boundary line, and it would, would appear that the tree condition would, have, would have cover that off. And the other point was around the HMO condition, which I can see now included. So if that addresses um, the concerns of, of the petitioners, then I'm happy to move officer's recommendation. Okay, I'll put Bill and Councillor Tubedar. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Councillor Singh. Sorry. Councillor Tuba, I don't um, Enjoy yourself. Thank, t t <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to basically second the proposal to go with the officer's recommendation on this one. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Thank you. And anyway, with Mr. Tuba, he second. Well, I think this is very straightforward. And next door neighbours, they have the same property. So I support the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Okay, I'm not going to let you go away with this. So I'm going to, uh, just one point. 
the trees. Okay, I know we've got a tree report there, and that, that's great. Um, but let's say they trim them, and that's fine, but then they start digging, and it affects the roots, and the tree dies. What do we have to readdress that? Um, in terms of digging, there isn't any increase in the footprints. The, um, there'll be nothing. There'll be no foundations being built. Okay, fantastic. That's, that's fantastic. And the second thing is, there was an error on the drawing. There should have been a first floor extension at the back. But never mind. I only noticed that then. But it's been posed and seconded. Uh, those all in favour of Foster Recreation, please indicate. That's unanimous. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, item 10. Can someone go and get Councillor Gohill? Thank okay. you, Councillor. Here it goes, right over. <laughs> Hayden, whenever you're ready. Thank you, Chair. Okay, so item 10 refers to four church close West Straighton. The application seeks planning permission to turn a six-person HMO into a seven-person HMO. The application is being appealed on non-determination. Had it not been appealed on non-determination, we'd be recommending it for refusal for the reasons which are outlined in this presentation and reasons which are outlined in the committee report. Uh, the development site is located on the west side of church close. The area is residential. To the south of the site is a public park. In terms of constraints, it's located within the West Strait and Conservation Area. There are some listed buildings around the site, but they are a considerable distance from the development site. There is also the green belt located to the south of the site, and the site is located upon potentially contaminated land, as well as being within the Colm Valley Archaeological Priority Zone. Uh, at present, the site is being used as a six-person HMO, as previously stated. It's got four car parking spaces. Residents are sharing facilities within the house, such as kitchens and living room areas. They've got their individual bedrooms, which include en suites. And um, as I mentioned previously, the application is seeking to turn this into a seven-bed HMO. In terms of the proposed development, as you can see, um, on the layout plan, one of the car parking spaces has been removed, so we've gone from four parking spaces to three parking spaces. Also, the storage area at the front of the site has been changed from um, has been changed from a storage area to the seventh bedroom in the HMO. So there are no external changes to the building. It is simply the case of adding an additional resident within the once storage room. And like I said, in terms of external changes we have the parking layout change previously shown. So in terms of refusal reasons, um, the application is for a larger HMO, seven bed HMO. Four parking spaces are required for the HMO. One parking space has been removed, leaving three parking spaces on the site. The parking space closest to the road, which is shown to be horizontal, has been considered to be poor in terms of getting in and out and its um, actual usability and manoeuvrability it would be quite difficult for anyone to get in and out of there safely so we don't actually think that three parking spaces can be accommodated at the site of the um, parking layout which is shown so that leaves a shortfall of two parking spaces at the site um, the shortfall in parking would lead to roadside parking on church close which is already quite busy and already has parking issues um, as outlined by the residents in the petition so the shortfall in parking will lead to roadside parking. Roadside parking is probably going to be um, lead to a more hazardous environment for local residents and road and car users, as well as causing more traffic and build-up as cars will have to drive around cars which are parked at the roadside. So that is our reason for refusing the application. And I will now show you some pictures of the existing site as it appears. So this is the HMO at present. As you can see, there's some cars parked. It's the rear elevation of the site. Um, as you can see, there is some roadside parking already going on at the development site. The access as well is set directly against the main road. So getting into that space, which was horizontal to the road, would lead to a lot of maneuvering issues in and out of the site. And it would probably need the crossover and um, access to actually be widened. 
so that was the reason why we didn't think that parking space was actually um, usable. Again, another image which demonstrates that there is some um, parking um, issues already on the road, and I think this one sort of depicts the kind of issue which we're trying to avoid on Church Close. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you, Hayden. That was very good. Thank you. Um, it looks like we're empty, so I don't think the petition is here. Do we have any written response for the petition? No. Do we have any one from the applicant? No. I have received uh, an email from Councillor Sweeting, but she must put it into the Democratic Services, otherwise it will not be read out. So I'm sure as a committee you've all read it. That's fine. But please, just as a note, in future, if you want your statements to be read out, you have to put it into Democratic Services. Um, on that note, I'll go straight to committee. So, Councillor Tuckwell, Councillor Singh. Thank you. Um, I just want to test, test a couple of things here. Um, I'd, de I'd dearly love to add another condition or two to this one, but I, I, I don't think I'm, there's many, many legs on, on that one. But I think it's in the report. Um, but is this in a flood risk area or, or not? Hayden, do you want to pin that? Um, as far as I'm concerned, and to the best of my understanding, it isn't, but I will check for you now again in the committee report. No, it's not located in there for clarity. Thank you. So, so my follow-up to that is it wouldn't need a, a flood risk assessment as a possible second refusal reason, I guess. No, not if he doesn't have any flood No, that's true, that's true. Yeah. So, um, okay. Um, yeah, I mean... You know, I know I know Church Close um, quite well. It is quite a compact um, little close, and it leads onto the closest open space as well. So, uh, I'm happy to, to support the officer's recommendation here with the uh, with the refusal reason uh, outlined. Unless any other members can maybe figure out a way to maybe add another one on, but I'm happy to move. Councillor Singh. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, parking. It's two car park, uh, parking is not enough, so I'm second uh, of this competition. Thank, Thank you. you. So that is proposed and seconded. Um, can I have a show of hands, those in agreement with officer regulation of refusal? Excuse me. There you go. Thank you very much. Okay, so that's the end of the petitions. So now we go to the normal agenda. And who's got the computer? So I believe this is you, Matt. So Max, keep calling you Matt Smith. See, I'm a Doctor Who fan and I can't help it. Max, after you, sir. Okay, I'm not quite sure how much of a uh, presentation you want on this one because this was an item from the last committee and it's no, I deferred for a site. Because I so wasn't present, I think, give us a presentation. Um, I wasn't here. And then I will going to hand over to Councillor Tuckwell because he... He was in charge when I wasn't here, and uh, he probably can give the committee a bit more advice than I can. So, after you, Matt. Okay, great. Okay, we are looking at a rectangular pot in a suburban location containing a single two-bed bungalow close to the Fraser River. That's, um, you can see that on the left, This uh, just running up the middle of the screen. Um, the proposal is to demolish the existing bungalow and build a block of four flats. Um, you see the street scene there, the, the bungalow in question is one in the middle, you see there's, a, there's another bungalow on the left. Um, the predominant scale of the street is two storeys, as you can see from the, the, the dwelling on the right hand, hand side of the picture. Um, that's a photograph of the rear of the, um, of the application site. And um, this is the existing bungalow, and it's the roof plan and floor plan, so that's, a, that's the plans of it. And this is the uh, comparison with the footprint of the, of the proposal. Um, and some some floor plans there. Uh, I suppose what's what's uh, crucial about this scheme is that we previously refused an application for five flats at the site, and this was in a two and a half story building, and it was refused on five reasons: um, scale and the impact on the conservation area, the impact on, men on the amenities of number 16 to the east, uh, the poor mix of units, like lack of a family unit in particular, and a poor standard of accommodation, 
and a lack of legal agreement to restrict parking. Uh, we consider they've overcome all five of those reasons for refusal with the current scheme, certainly by um, reducing the scale, uh, reducing the ridge height of the um, property so that it would be the same as the as a general height along the street and reducing the width. Um, and also they're including a three-bedroom unit um, within the scheme, so that, that meets that requirement for an on-site family dwelling. Uh, it's also been drawn away from boundary to it to um, remove any impact on loss of light to the, the neighbouring dwelling. Um, and um, standard accommodation has been addressed as well, in, in particular the um, low ceiling heights. So just to scan through, this is an um, image of the, the footprint of the previously refused scheme. Uh, the overall reduction in floor space from previously refused to the current one is about uh, 30%. Um, so there we are, that's the scale of it. You can see the height of it being higher than the neighbouring one to the to the to, to the east. And there's a more fussy design which we weren't keen on with the dormer and the extra roof forms. And the the, you know, the revised scheme is much much cleaner. And we're reducing from say four windows on the frontage and bringing that to um to three on the revised scheme. Um, just sort of reducing the width at first floor level. So there, that's you see the um, previously refused scheme, much bit larger footprint, and there the additional flat in the roof as well. Um, so just bring us back for comparison to the proposed scheme. There you can see the much the much narrower frontage. Um, <clears throat> uh, members went on site because concerned about the impact on the conservation area. Um, I suppose it's, it's members' feedback on 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 whether they considered their 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 concerns were addressed following that site visit. Thank you. Sorry, you know you finished. Daydreaming, watching, looking at the pictures. Um, okay. Who went on the site visit? Let's have a show of hands. Okay, so so thing. So, um, Councillor Tuckwell, if you want to go first about yeah, your I'll, observations, I'll, and I'll go down the line, and then we'll and, I'll, and I'll have a, a couple of questions as well. Yeah, of course, um, no the, problem with coming out from this. But uh, yeah, it was a very wet day for those of us that went. Um, uh, site visits are supposed to be organised on sunny days, but not on this occasion. Um, and I remember last meeting, we had some misgivings about this uh, application, given that it had five refusal reasons previously, and then went through to 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 a, a an approval. And it was on Glen's Glen's uh, steer actually, which was the site visit was really to try and understand the relationship with the conservation area, and that was that was the the real reason for for the site visit. Um, and again, going there, uh, I, I could certainly see that there was there was no negative impact on the on the conservation area. That was that was plain plain to be seen. In actual fact, the conservation area on the map I thought was in the wrong place. It should have been a few doors down where they got these nice cottages, but that's actually not in the conservation area. So, so the, the, I, I, it served me well to so and go and see to sort of you know have that visual relationship, and then I could certainly see from my perspective. That there wasn't a negative impact on the um, Cali Lock conservation area. I think it is. Um, the other points that we talked about at the last committee, which was we now have a 106 agreement. There's a family home that's been included. Um, the relationship with number 16 has been addressed for a redesign, and consequently that then flows into the size, scale, and mass. You know, I think there's been some rear, uh, side dormers been removed, and it is um, slightly smaller than than the original than the original um, um, proposal or, or application. Um, so that was a, an overview from, from my perspective in, in terms of how, what I got out of the site visit, but obviously clear to, keen to hear from, from my colleagues that were with me. The question I had from officers, it says in the report that the 45 degree line has got a minor infringement. Um, so I just want to try and understand, you know, is, is that a material consideration that we need to be taking into account here? Because it is something that was mentioned in the petition, and it is something that we probably just need to get a feel from officers on as to whether or not that is grounds for uh, you know refusal, or, or whether or not it is it is minor in nature and therefore it's not of material consideration. Okay, um, this is a relevant plan here. I'm not sure if I can zoom in on it. We could if we could, but you can just see where the pointer is. That's a 45 degree line. Uh, one of the objectives did did zoom in on that. That line there, that diagonal line, and, and um, did make the point that it it just very narrowly clips the corner of the building. But it's it's just such a um, it, it's just such a insignificant 
uh, infringement, if you can even say that, um, that we don't think it has any effect in terms of uh, daylight, sunlight impacts. You have to bear in mind that the, 40 feet, uh, the 45 degree line, that's a starting point where you'd start to consider uh, daylight Im impacts and not you know, anything within the 45 degree line would be refused. Very much. No, and if uh, if I can just just come back. So, um, th thank you for that explanation. That's 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 helpful. Other members might have a have a view on that as well. But in in terms of the building lines, so um, number sixteen, which I think is that on the left there, is that number sixteen? That's correct. Yeah. So the the building line sort of matches the building line to number sixteen. It's number twenty, I believe, where there's there's a little bit of overhang, isn't there, on the proposal. Oh, well, it's 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 staggered, so it's set yeah. back from 20, yeah. but it's set forward of 16, yeah. so it's yeah. so it steps back in the line. And I, and I think, Mr. Chairman, if I may come through you, that was the other point we got out of the site visit because we had, to, although it was a bit windy and rainy, we did our best to look at the the documents we had, and you could see that there was a on the extension there was a step back as well, which was kind of lessened, in my mind, the, the harm on that. So um, I'll, I'll pause there. I hope that's been useful for members and and let other people contribute. Thank you very much. Councillor Jubilar. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I originally, on the original application, I had an issue with the scale, size, the mass of the building, the appearance of it. And uh, after the site visit, I wasn't convinced that the issues had been addressed. And I still have got those issues with this uh, application. Thank you very much for your comments, Councillor Gohill. Thanks, Chairman. Um, it's a bit of a tricky one. Uh, I wasn't at the original uh, meeting when the site visit was called, but I, I went sorry, and, but I went along to the site visit and I watched back um, the committee meeting on YouTube, and I, I was a bit concerned about it because of the size and the bulk. Um, but actually, what what the images, what the plans don't show, and what I saw at the um, site visit, my concern was who's behind those trees and will they be impacted by that bulk as well and actually the answer is nothing. Um, there's, there's the canal um, there's the canal nearby um, sorry Cowley Lock nearby and uh, behind that there's you can't exactly walk along there either so it's not exactly like people can walk past and be impacted by it as well um, and we, we saw it from multiple angles um, you know there was um, we, we really took into account how this could really impact everyone and I think my overall opinion anyway was that on the whole um, I think this improvement, this um, application is acceptable so uh, Chairman I'd like to propose um, officers in support of officers recommendations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, that's, I think the committee that's really good. Well done for going. Sorry I couldn't be there. I was away I'm afraid. Um, anyway so I need someone to propose and second. Councillor Tuckwell. Sorry, I, I just proposed. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Uh, Councillor <laughs> Councillor Tuckwell. Yeah, I, I think given uh, the point I made earlier on, I'm more than happy to second. Okay, thank you. So I've been proposed and second. Can I have a show of hands, those in favour? Oh, can I have a show of hands for a refusal or abstainment? Thank you very much. So we have an abstain one abstention. Apart from that, it uh, has been passed. Um, that draws us to the end. And thank you very much, everybody. Uh, I know this is a, some, a, few, a few, maybe a few goodbyes as the committee will change and we'll have new members next time around. But for those who are leaving us, thank you very much for your support. It's been much appreciated. And uh, I all look forward to seeing you tomorrow at full council. So thank you very much and good night.